What's up, everybody? This is Three Kings. Welcome to the channel. Now, I don't usually do a lot of these tutorials, but I've had a lot of recent interest in my Reddit posts when I did some new build features. Um, welcome to the channel. If you're coming over from Reddit, over there, you're going to know me as Mr. Zebra. So today, what I'm going to show you is just how to download Ada64 sensor panel, where to get it, and then for some of you that want to run the small screen on the outside of your PC, I'll show you where to get the Raspberry Pi and what version I'm using. So first, what you want to do is you're going to want to go to Chrome, go to Ada64, and you're going to want to download Ada64 Extreme. Now, in the drop down, you will see some downloads. I'm going to give you some keys as well as a basic package that you can install, that you can tweak for your own computer. But once you've downloaded Ada64, you're gonna go ahead and open it up. Okay, all right, once it's open, you're gonna to go to Preferences. First, you wanna to go to General. Here you want to check load aid 64 at Windows startup. I like to have it minimized and closed down to the system tray. Hit apply. Then you're going to go to sensor panel. You're going to hit show sensor panel. Click enable context menu. We'll do these later. This basically keeps it on top. This keeps it locked to wherever you have it installed. That way, whenever you open Ada 64, it'll always go back there. Okay. Now, when it opens up, initially, Ada64 is going to be very small. Okay, it's going to be really super small screens, like 800 by 300 or something. And it's ugly. Okay, so don't be overwhelmed. We'll get there. Hit apply. It's going to go ahead and open it up. Now, this is the one that I built. Um, it does take a little bit of time to get to this point because all the settings are very tedious. There's no plug and play. Um, the only thing you know, you're gonna find going through this is the gauges that are pre-installed. They're kind of archaic. Now, you can build your own gauges. Uh, I suggest you look how to do that. It's time consuming. I'm working on mine now. And uh, maybe if I get them up, I'll do another video on that. So first off, when yours comes up, it's just going to show CPU, temperature, maybe, you know, RAM speed, um, a couple other things I don't remember. First, you want to set your screen size to something that's workable. You know, you want to have room to work. So input your size you want here. If you want it to be the size of your monitor, 1920 by 1080. If you want it, you know, smaller. This fits perfect on my 7-inch Raspberry Pi, which I'll show you and I'll provide a link down below. Um, cause this is the, the size of the screen. It's, it's not high res, um, but it works perfect for this. Okay. So first you're going to go in here. You're going to right click the middle of the screen. Okay. You're going to hit new. And here you see you have all your plugins. There's a lot of plugins you can use. Now there's a lot of other softwares out there that do similar stuff but this i found is the most robust i tried using the nzxt cam software for a while but you literally can't even change the size of that screen so it's terrible and it's not very accurate so let's just say uh you want to do your cpu utilization are okay, you going to click that now do you want it to be just text do you want it to be uh, a graph a gauge whatever you're going to go to the drop down. You're going to pick, let's say, uh, graph. Okay, now you got your graphs. You're going to pick CPU. Okay. And then you hit OK. There you go. So there's a simple graph. Now, if you want to change or modify any of these settings, you right click the object, you go to modify. And then here you can change the colors, you can change the size, 
You can change your min-max values. You can change what kind of graph you want. Okay, so let's uh, we'll pick um, you know, here's your background. Background obviously is black. The grid is green. The frame is gray. And we want our graph color to be, let's say, pink. Okay, we want our grid to be. Let's just make it a simple gray. And then um, we'll leave the rest, okay? There you go. So that's uh, your graph. If you want to change your CPU to a gauge, here's your gauges. They only come in a, what was it, four or five? So you have white, white reverse, black, black reverse. Basically, reverse just means it's going to have the red and count down backwards. Or you can do custom. Custom is where you're going to put input your own gauges. And that's something maybe we'll do a tutorial on later. So let's pick black. We'll do um, medium. You can change your font styles and text size. That's about it on these. Pick your CPU utilization and hit OK. There you go. Now, if you click on it, you can't move it. The only way to move it, right click again, hit move. And then you can move it wherever you want on here. Okay. So basically all of these are different types of graphs uh, or gauges, what have you. You can do a simple text. So we're going to go ahead and delete this. So this is showing four speeds. It'll update whenever you change it in your BIOS. If you want to overclock, it'll show your overclock. We'll go ahead and modify that. I'll show you how to do that. So this is a simple sensor item, which means it's just gonna come out in a text form. This is a CPU clock. Um, you can, once you pick it, you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. You know, if you wanna be like uh, Mike's super overclocked i7, it'll come up, you know. Um, you can change the style, you can do the, the coloring, and that's about it for that. This one, very similar, but this is just a regular static label. Okay, so you have your sensor item, which is picking up whatever changes in the computer. Then you have your static label, which just labels anything, any gauge. So if you have a special gauge, you want to put a special gate, you know, title, you can do that here. Okay. Um, like I said, this is a very robust feature. You know, I have a clock. You can put your clock since I don't have a clock in my room. Okay, that's also just a sensor item. You got your time. You have different kinds of time. You can do your date. Um, some of these I know require maybe an additional plugins. Um, the only thing I can't seem to get working is my, my network download and upload rates. I did have them working at one point, but now they're not working now. So I've got to play with that. And the last thing I'm going to show you, well, now we messed it up. Okay, got rid of the label. For whatever reason, it puts the clock and then labels over the top of it. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is the background. Now, the backgrounds are going to give you are kind of crappy. Um, I've tried to play with seeing if you can do uh, transparent backgrounds, you can't. Okay. So you have these colors, that's it. Um, no way to make them see through, which would be awesome because you know my wallpaper engine obviously is gonna display on my Raspberry Pi since it's an HDMI Raspberry Pi and it acts as another monitor. Unfortunately, it's gonna do uh, a solid background. The only way to get a background on this, to so right click, do new, go to image, and this is where you're gonna download your image. Here's the caveat to this though. The image has to be the same exact size as the sensor panel you made. So if you have a huge image, go to you know paint 3D or whatever, downsize it, save it, and then go here. 
So what I did on mine, I have uh, the snip tool. And basically what I did was just took Windows snip, open that up, hit new. You can search for this if you go win hit Windows, just type in snip, hit new. And then what you do is just drag your whole screen like that. Okay, there you go. Save it. Resize it. And then you go here. Oh, there we go. You hit new. You're going to go to image. Input it. Now when it inputs and saves, it's going to be at the very bottom. Here's your sensor panel manager. This is basically showing you if you right click and hit sensor panel manager, it's going to show you all the modules you have set up. I have quite a few. Okay. It's going to save down here. You have to move it all the way up so it's at the top layer. So I'll show you here. I'll move it down. So if you move it down, you can see it's starting to cover everything. So I guess you could say top layer is at the bottom of the manager. Okay. So once it saves down here, click on it and just hit move up. Okay, we're just moving it up. There you go. And that's about it, guys. Um, oh, I was going to show you. This is, so you got your download. This is Amazon. This is the um, GeekPie 7 inch. This is the max display on it, 10 by 24. I know you can get some better ones. It's not necessary. This thing's cheap. I mean, 40 bucks. I think I got mine on eBay for 30 bucks. This will be faster, obviously, to ship to you. Um, so if you want to do that, uh, you can make your own case for it. You're going to have to find a way to hide the wires, but it is HDMI enabled. Uh, once you plug it in, you want to turn it on with this button here. Let's see if I can expand it. So you want to turn it on with this button here. And then here's your source over here. You won't even mess with these. I mean, you can change your colors, contrast, but you can do that in NVIDIA if you have NVIDIA control panel. So you source it over. You got AVI. I think there's VGA. There's some serial adapters in here. Um, it's possible you guys that don't have extra HDMI slots could go and do a serial to USB. I've never tried it, but I've heard it works. Uh, source it to HDMI, and then uh, let the computer pick it up as a monitor. Once you're done with that, you know, you go into your display. So here's, let me go ahead and plug mine in real quick, and I'll show you how it looks. All right, so I plugged it in. And there'll be a video at the uh, end of this. So I'm showing you kind of my layout. So here's my layout. I have three main screens. This is the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi sits up here. Move it wherever you want. Drop it. Hit apply. And you're done. Once you're done, you're going to go ahead and take your Raspberry Pi uh, or your sensor panel item and just slide it up there. So once you're finished with working on however you want it set up, and it's going to take some time. You know, you can also, you know, do your coloring. Um, I didn't show you that. So once you have your your type of graph or uh, gauge, um, you're going to go to click on it again, go to bar, and then here's where you're going to click where it changes colors. So right here, this is motherboard temp. If it goes over 70, it turns yellow. Obviously, it's never going to that. So I max that out so I never see it since it has to have some kind of default numbers and i just put pink since my build is blue and pink or light blue and pink okay um same with these right click modify well this one is a little bit different because it's a graph so it's not going to have the only ones that have uh the bars are the only ones you're going to have their changes up here so you're going to click that let's do pink on that and hit okay there you go so pretty simple, guys. Um, if you have any additional questions, let me know. In the drop down below, I will show you um, a uh, cloud storage. I've got some basic files you guys can use. I have keys to set up your Extreme Pro version. 
Now, the keys are good forever until you update the software. Once you update the software, you're going to have to re-enter the keys. You can use them as many times as you want. Um, I will also have a pre-built sensor panel in there. Okay. Once you download this, the pre-built, it's going to look a lot like mine. Um, I'm not sure what version I have in there now. So you can take, this is an 8-core 9700K. Um, you can remove some cores and just display the four. You can take and change them so they're long. You're going to want to play around with it. So to import, you're going to right-click the center in a, in a blank space. Go to your manager, and you're going to hit import. Okay. Once you hit import, wherever you saved it, uh, it'll just come up as a sensor panel file. Click it, hit open. It'll auto-populate, and there you go. You got yourself a sensor panel. And then you can kind of mess around with it from there. I found it's a little bit easier if you already have a panel that's pre-built. Then you can just click and move them around. You can modify them. You can do whatever. All right. Uh, lastly, I'm going to show you how to lock it in place. So say you want it uh, in this corner. We're going to go ahead and open up our preferences here. All right. So we've already got these checked. You want to go ahead and go to prevent lock and lock panel size. Um, if you're playing, if you have it on one of your main monitors and you don't want it to cover everything all the time, don't check to keep sensor panel topmost. Um, but you can go ahead and check these. Hit apply, hit OK. And then once you do a restart, A to 64 sensor panel will always go where you set it. And that's about it, guys. Got any other questions? Hit me up. Um, like I said my name is Mr. Zebra on Reddit. I'll have a link to that profile so you can check out some of my builds. Um, I'll have a link to my Twitch channel. Um, and then you guys can send me messages there if you have any questions. That's it, fellas. Talk to you later. Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to show you this is my build. Um, just a quick studio shot of my recent water cool build. Um, here is the Raspberry Pi in action. But like I showed you guys before, you just slide it up there and lock it. And it'll sit in place whenever you reboot the computer. It'll always go back right there. So um, it's a really great functionality um, for seeing everything. And uh, if you have any other questions, like I said, all the information is dropped down below. And I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by and watching, and we'll talk to you later.